Okay, welcome to Navigating the Library Databases. Thank you for signing up. So please, if you can, open up your browser, use Chrome, um, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever you're most comfortable with. I just recently discovered Chrome. Um, it's pretty awesome, and I'm able to have really no logistical problems in, in doing my searches. Now, how familiar are you both with the library website? Have you used it before? What's your experience? Um, I just started looking at it the other day. Okay, good deal. And Robin, how comfortable are you with it? Oh, okay, you used it for the last two graduate English classes. Okay, good deal. Now you both are master students, so this is great because you're pretty much familiar with a lot of it, so I will not spend too much time with the basic searches and we'll look at the more graduate level searches. Now, if you'll see in the beginning, now the Belk Library website has thousands upon thousands of databases, thousands of information, and it can be very difficult to get to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be showing both of you some shortcuts in how to access information that are specific to your majors. Now, Alyssa, you are in education, Robin, you are English. So we'll focus on those two particular subjects. Now, most students, predominantly all students, are used to using the app search button right here. This is set up to look very much like a Google search because let's face it, we love Google, everybody uses Google. But the issue with this is that it does not cover all of the databases. You are actually only looking at a small portion of the library collection when you are doing a search using this box. Now, why do we have it if it doesn't search everything? Um, there's a couple of reasons. It's, it's kind of psychological mostly because so many students and faculty are so Google-centric, they're just so used to using Google that this system um, just makes the most sense to them. So we have it up there so you can do a search. So go ahead and, and, and type in your research in your browser. Okay, so just by doing a, a basic search on education, um, if you look up here, you'll see that it's kind of broken down between books and more and articles. But it's funny because if you scroll down, you'll see articles. So it's a, it's a little kind of a little confusing. Um, you can refine on the left hand side. So say you have a project where you have to have five books and five articles. So you can click on and just get book searches or you can just get ebook searches or website. So just click on one of those links. Okay. And so you can get, here's just strictly books. Now there's a couple of things about this page I'd like you to be aware of. One is the call number. This is the location of the book in the library. So if you were to physically come into the library and wanna get this book, this is where you would locate it. But if you look on the right hand side, you guys are gonna see a request it button. Click on that. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you for your name and your banner ID. So go ahead and type in your name and your banner ID. This is how you can request a book to be picked up by a library student and held at the front desk for you. Now, if you're a distance education student, you can actually get these items mailed to you. Uh, now, you both are both campus students, right? No. Oh, you're not. You're DE students. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, hey, well then good. I'm your distance education librarian. Welcome. Um, yes, you can get these mailed to your house. So when you click on the request it button, you can choose where you want it to go. So as DE students, you can opt for the um, deep distance learning doctoral student. Then you can click on that and then the librarians here will know to ship it to your, to your address on file. If you are, happen to be on campus, you can click on circulation desk. And what that will do is that will mean that the students will pick up this item have it at the desk for you. You can come straight to the library services desk, pick it up and be done. You can choose up to as many items as you want. As students, you can check up to 99 items at any given time. But if you do this, it does take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours for the, for the process. We get a lot of students that put request it, then they come to the library five minutes later and they're like, where's the book? And it's like, it's still on the shelf. You can go get it. Um, but this is the kind of service. So if you have you know, maybe you're thinking about your, your stuff on Friday, but you're not going to be able to come until Tuesday to pick it up. That's perfect. It gives them the weekend to set it up. So this is how you request items. This is also how you request items from any one of the other schools, because you have access to UNCA's library in addition to Western Carolina. So if you happen to find the perfect book and you see that it's at WCU, um, what they'll do is they'll have that book shipped 
from those schools and they do runs every day. So it's a pretty quick turnaround in order to get your books. But as distance education students, you can just opt to have a mail to your house and not just books, but the DVDs. So maybe you're taking a break and you want to watch season six of Dexter. You can get that shipped to your house as well. So it's definitely a really cool um, system that we have in place. So you can make sure that you get the items without having to drive all the way up to Boone to get them. And how long do you get to keep them for? You get everything for 21 days, but you have the option to renew. And I'll show you how that works. Um, okay. Basically, if you look up at the top right hand side, you're going to see your name. Because you logged in with the banner ID. So go ahead and click on that. Tell Google not to save my password. Okay. Okay, you're gonna see your account information. So you can click on your holds, your list. Like for instance, I have my daughter uses my my account. So I have I want to renew both these books. All I have to do is click renew and it's done. So if you need to keep the book longer, you can do it this way. You don't have to send the books back. As distance education students, again, they will mail the items to you. And you also get a prepaid envelope, um, basically, that will you just put the books back in, and then you, uh, you don't have to pay to, to ship them back. Now, Robin, your question is, if I'm on campus but see something from Western Carolina, it would actually go to the circulation desk at the library. So you would just walk over to the Belk Library and you would pick up the books there. And how will you know they're here? You'll receive an email. You'll get an email saying your books are at the front desk. Come by and get them. And they'll hold them for you for a pretty long time. So uh, this is how you can renew them. This is how you can check out. Here's how you can keep up with your lists. So this is your account. This is how you can um, keep an eye on what you've checked out before and any new information. So yeah, shows that my renewals were successful. Here's my new renewal dates. Awesome. Don't have to worry about it again. That's how you would go in and, and look at that. So let's go ahead and go back to our search. Okay, so we're back on the main page. If you click on the title of one of the books, there's a couple of things I wanna make you kind of aware of. Again, here's the location. Here's how to request the book. Again, this is telling me that this is at Appalachian State. What's cool is that it gives me kind of the breakdown and it also gives me some extra topics that I can use in my subject search. Now, because you guys are at the graduate level, you're used to doing some more intensive research. So topic subjects can be really helpful because it's a different way of saying um, what you might be looking for. But what I want you guys to be aware of, on each page, you're gonna see this blue button. Do you guys have a blue button on your screen? I want you guys to click on that. And what it does is it gives you this, the citation. So you can literally copy and paste the citation and put it in your works cited, put it in your bibliography. So as you're doing your research, as you're collecting your articles, as you're collecting your books, you can get the citation directly. So you don't have to um, get the, the guidelines book. You don't have to generate the citation. When using the library website, it will always provide the site. So always keep an eye out for that cite this title button. You're going to see this button when you are looking at the books. When we're looking at articles and ebooks, it's going to be a different button, and I'll show you where that is. But I will tell you guys a secret. They're almost always on the right-hand side of the screen. So when you're doing searches, always look for that button. And if you're having any databases issues, click on Report a Problem, and this will let our folks know that, hey, this database is down, this isn't working, um, and they're really quick turnover. So you're going to get a quick fix. So were you guys able to click on the site button? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Because I hate yeah, citing. I, like <laughs> I hate citing. So if somebody's providing it for me, that's awesome. And I was trying to do it all yesterday for everything I was finding. So that's a helpful tool. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't. Uh, Spare yourself the time. You guys are master students, probably working full-time jobs. Yeah, is do whatever you can to make it easier. But yeah, this button is, is pretty awesome. So again, this is just how you look for the books. This is how you do searches for the books. Um, you can do an advanced search too if, you're, if you've got specific keywords. And we'll go into a little more of that in a little bit. But I just wanted you to feel comfortable with kind of just doing a basic search using, using app search. But now as graduate level students, like I said, if you want to be more specific and really cover everything, there's two different ways of doing research at the graduate level using this website that is the most useful. So the first is to click right here, Classic Catalog. 
And what this does is this searches all the books. So again, we're looking at just books and just eBooks. So you can do a search through title, author, subject. So just choose your subject. Okay. Um, over here, you can choose just to look at items at Appalachian State, Western North Carolina. Um, I tend to just choose all when I do a search because I want to open up to as many resources as I can get, especially knowing that they will bring those books over for free. I don't have to worry about it. And then do click the submit button. Like super slow. <laughs> Yeah, the other day I couldn't even get the site, the library site to come up at all. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of um, techie stuff. I've been getting like 50,000 emails saying such and such is down, such and such is down. Um, why are we waiting for it to load, though? Just, just a couple things on this page you can see. Um, course reserves. You may have a lot of instructors that say, hey, I've got this article, it's on course reserves. Or I have this book, it's on reserve. This is where you can find those reserves. So you can do the search by course or instructor. I love when we get students that are like, I'm in this class, but I don't know the name of the class, and I don't know the instructor, but I got to get this book. So <laughs> it's always a bit of a challenge. <laughs> but if you have that information, you could do the search. And what's cool about reserves is that they're predominantly online. So just by looking up the instructor and the course, you can access those articles directly. They'll be saved as PDFs. You'll be able to download them on your computer. You'll be able to get your own free copy. And so that's kind of a cool tool right here. Okay, so here I've done, I've done my search. Here's English literature. Um, if you scroll down, it gets more specific. So the more specific you are in your search, the less, um, the less hits you're gonna get, you know, kind of like Google. But basically, let's say um, I'm just going to click on a random English literature. And again, this is just how you search for books. So if you are just looking for specific books or ebooks or microfiche, this is how you would do a search. Now, the reason why I showed you this is because, like I've said before, using the app search, using just this, it's not going to look at the whole collection. But when you use this button, it does look at the whole collection. So you are looking at every book that's available within that particular topic. Um, I know it, it does seem kind of odd that we would have this, but as long as our, our, our reasoning is that as long as students are getting something, you know, as long as they're using it, that's cool. We're happy. Um, we like meeting with them so that we can show them all these other ways of accessing information. But as graduate students, it is definitely encouraged that you use these two options in your research because you're, you need as much information, especially for your literature reviews, as you can get on your subjects. And this is the easiest way to, and the best way to do that. So again, it has that request button, so you can request to have the books sent home to you. Um, it gives you the location. It also lets you know if it's been checked out or not. Just by clicking on the title, um, let's see, I need to look at it as a patron. Um, I can get all that information. Again, the citation, what type of book, is it a book, is it an ebook? Here's my request button. I can send the call number to me via a text message. So maybe I'm coming up to the library and um, today and I wanna pick up all these books, you'll know exactly where they are. So it's just another way of looking for books. So how do you guys feel about book searches? Do you want to do a couple of practice runs, or have you been doing it as you've been following along? I've been trying, following along. Awesome. How about you, Robin? Oh, you've been doing it. Perfect. Okay, good deal. Okay, so that's that's basically the book research. Um, we'll go into a little, we'll do like a research search in just a bit. But let me introduce you down here. This is article databases and e-research tools. Um, Go ahead and click on that. What this does is like we, like I said, the library spends a fortune, trust me, on databases. And databases are journals, they're magazines, they're specific websites. Um, because there are so many, we found that the best way for students to access the information that they need in a timely and efficient manner, because again, you guys don't have a lot of time, there's a couple of ways that you can access the databases. You can do, if you have a specific one that you're partial to, like when I was an archeology span student, I was always using JSTOR. I love JSTOR. So I could get to JSTOR directly by clicking on J or going to JSTOR. Um, Alyssa, you mentioned you just kind of started doing research yesterday. What I recommend is that you go by subject. So as you can see, there's every subject that you could possibly major in here at Appalachian State. So by clicking on education, like I was an anthropology student, so I'll click on anthropology. 
These are all of the anthropology related databases that you could do a search in. Consider them like the anthropology Googles. Only, and this is what's really cool, is that all of these databases are peer reviewed, they're scholarly reviewed, they are legitimate expert peer reviewed resources. And this is going to be very, very important at the graduate level because it's not enough to just get websites here and there. People start talking about like how much authorized are these experts in the field. Um, your information has to be specific, it has to be expert, it has to be um, legitimate. Now, Mike Smith's blog on auto mechanics and educational resources might seem like a really cool website, but you don't know what Mike Smith's qualifications are. So you, as on the master's level, you have to start thinking about how legitimate are these resources. Um, I tell people, save yourself the time and the trouble and use the databases because you know that the resources that you're getting from these sites are legitimate, they are peer reviewed, and nine times out of 10, it's gonna be exactly what you're looking for. So as you can see, there's quite a few databases on anthropology, or if you're looking at the English Robin or Alyssa, if you're looking at the education, you're going to see that there are a lot of databases that are just related to education. So you can do that same search that we did with the books in one of these. So just choose one. I like Academic Search Complete. And then click on the Advanced Search tab and type in a couple of keyword searches. This is your research. So maybe you have a specific paper. Um, education, um, let's see, you talked about um, year-round school as opposed to part-time school. So I'm trying to think of what would be the best way to describe that. Here's your search. Now look on the left-hand side. When you're doing your search, there's a couple of ways that you can narrow things down. I am one of those people that I have to have the full article. Whether I'm gonna read the full article or not, I need to have the full article. So you can limit your search to just full text because there's nothing more annoying than finding the perfect article and then finding out, oh, this is just a citation. So by clicking on the full text, I am getting just full text articles. You can also limit to if you're just doing peer-reviewed journals, maybe you're not interested in magazines or newsletters, you can click on scholarly journals. That narrowed down my search to five. So maybe I don't care about that, so it brought my search back up to 41. You can also alter the publication date just by messing with the dates here. So maybe you just need the last 12 year or 10 years as opposed to the last 40, okay. That narrows down your search too. And you can also limit to magazines or academic journals. So you can play with this a lot um, to, to what you're most comfortable with. So here's this one. This seems like an interesting article. So click on the title. Again, it gives you different ways to say it. So school year, we might want to change our search later to that. The thing about research is there's it's never it's like that scene, you know, in Indiana Jones where he's like, X never, ever marks this spot. Research is the same way. You're never going to find everything on the first hit. you got to come up with different ways to say it, use different keyword terms, use different search terms, especially at the master's level because you have to find so much information for your literature review. So that's where these subject terms come in handy because they're simply different ways of saying what you're looking for. So check it out. On the tools bar, right over here, it's gonna give you a couple of options. Click on that site button. Like I told you, the site button is almost always gonna be on the right hand side. So here's your APA citation, bam, copy and paste it. Or you can export it. So say you guys are using EndNote, or you're using um, RefWorks, or you're using Zotero. And you guys, if you're into citation tools, we do a citation tool um, workshop. We've got two of them coming up, so sign up for it. But what this can do is this can directly export your article to Zotero, to EndNote, to any of the reference managers that you're using. Or you can actually just create your own folder within the database and you can save all of your articles into there. So you have a couple of options when it comes to saving your articles. Now at the master's level, you will be encouraged to check out the citation tools. So again, schedule a wrap session or come to the citation tools workshop or schedule a wrap session anyway. Um, and this way you learn how to use Zotero because it, or EndNote because it's a 
super easy way of keeping all of your articles all in one place. And you can create a folder for each class you're taking, because one of you guys said you're taking two classes and you've got two research papers. So it's an excellent way of keeping that stuff separate. Um, and this tool will help you with that. So if you want to learn more about it, definitely sign up for the workshop. But again, the most important is the site button. So always keep that in mind that you can click the site button and get the APA citation. So again, here you go. You've got this great article. You can download it as PDF full text. You can read it directly off here. Um, what's cool about using this is that it gives you the net option to make notes. So you can read and take notes as you're typing. So it could be really useful in terms of um, as you're doing, although this looks like a pretty interesting article. Hmm. Yeah. Alyssa, this seems like it's going to be a fun article, I think. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot more interesting than the boring library stuff I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this is how you can save it. This is how you can cite it. Um, you can save it all in one folder so you don't have to save it on your desktop. There's a couple of ways that you can play around with this. So go ahead and um, go ahead and do a couple searches. See if you can find some articles and um, let me know if you need some help. Now, if you can, Alyssa, um, if you need any troubleshooting, what I can do is I can give you presenter rights, and we can we can see how you're researching. So here you go. You're up. So am right. I on the screen? Yep. Oh, am I in the right place? Yes, you are. So just search something that for one of the like the um, the year-round one, or yeah, click on the click on the advanced search button right underneath. Okay. Okay, and put in as many keywords in those boxes that pertain to your paper. This is where you're going to want to, like you have your thesis statement in your head, think of five words that best describe your thesis statement. But right now we'll just use three. Okay. Oh. Don't worry, there's just three of us, so you're not on the spot. <laughs> Um, awesome. And then search. And then search. All right, good deal. So you're getting some good stuff. Um, like I said, feel free to limit to full text if you just want to get the whole article. Um, put as many limitations as you want, or if you just want to play around and see what you get. And so if I wanted just the scholarly, I'd click there too. Right. Oh. Yeah, see? Now click on the like click on the title of the first one. That, that would be a good comparison paper. You know, how does it work in California as opposed to or south versus north or east versus uh -huh. west. But like I said, check out the subjects. These are different ways of saying year-round calendar. So by looking at the subject terms, maybe you could jot a couple of those down when you're doing your search. And instead of using year-round calendar, maybe you'll try school schedules. Uh -huh. um, like I said, it's just it does give you some options when you're searching. And then you know you've got the site button on the right-hand side. Um, you can save the article onto your desktop or into a folder. But do you feel comfortable with it? Yes. Awesome. Okay, Robin, how are you doing? Let me uh, let me give you presenter rights and see see what you're up to. Okay, so yeah, click on the advanced search, and that's where you'll be able to put in all your keywords. Oh boy, you both have a lot of really interesting. Um, oh yeah, you don't you know, perfect. She's actually taking it a step further and being very specific about her search. That's really cool. Thank you for actually doing that, Robin, because I didn't get a chance to show you that. But yeah, you can limit your results in your search like exactly like she's doing. Robin, you're great. You should be teaching this class. <laughs> cool. So she was more specific. So it, it just went to articles that were now very good point, Robin. As you can see, the stuff that she actually put in, we don't have the full text for. So this is a very good point because this introduces us to interlibrary loan. Now, we have um, access to thousands of libraries in 180 different countries based on our interlibrary loan subscription, which means that if we don't have the article, we can get it for you. So Robin, click on that find at ASU button. It'll be right underneath, right underneath the title. There's an orange button that says find at ASU. Okay, perfect. Okay, 
This shows that we do not have access to it. However, you can request it from another library. So go ahead and click on the request from another library. Perfect. Now this is our interlibrary loan. You can get novels, you can get articles, you can get, this is like I said, this gives you access to libraries everywhere. So if you have never used interlibrary loan before, you're gonna wanna click on new user and then you're gonna register. This is gonna take just a couple of minutes. You guys don't have to do it right now, but what you'll do is you'll register, you'll give them a username and password, and then you'll get a screen. In fact, let me show you how it works, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, Robin, you are awesome because that was actually a segue into interlibrary loan. Okay, so she clicked on um, interlibrary loan. So if you are a first time user, you're gonna wanna click here to get an account. So you'll fill out all the information and then you can use whatever username and password you want. I use my app state one because it's one less username and password I have to remember. But what you'll do is you'll log in and you'll choose what you need to request, whether it's the article, a book, and then you're going to want to put in as much information about that article and book as you can. And then you click submit. This goes to the interlibrary loan librarian. She finds out where it is, the local library, and then she gets it sent to us and we turn around and send it to you. Now you can log in every day to see the status of the books. So you know exactly when the request was made and you have a tentative when it's going to get here. So it's pretty awesome in that regard. Now, if it's an article, they're pretty quick. You'll get it in about 24 hours to maybe two days. Um, if it's a book, it takes slightly longer just because it is coming from other libraries. But again, if you're a distance education student, you can request to have it sent to your house. If you're on campus, you can have it requested to get sent here at the desk. So this is how you would access those items that you really, really need um, that we don't have. Also, this is very good for dissertations because at the master's level, you may be asked to review dissertations from similar topics that you guys are writing about. This is a good way to request them. Awesome, Robin, thank you for that because um, that was definitely something I wanted to show you. Um, so do you have any questions about interlibrary loan? No. Okay. So don't, don't fret if you can't, if we don't have what you're looking for because you can get it. Um, but just keep in mind that when you're doing your research to, to really start thinking about your stuff like before, because I mean, you're master's level, so you guys aren't freshmen. You aren't waiting to the last minute to write something. So I don't worry about you guys. Um, but it is, it's a really great tool because you can get all of the information. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little time to get it. So how do you feel about searching the articles in the databases? Pretty good. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. Um, Google. We love Google. Everybody uses Google. If you use Google from our Belk site, this is pretty cool. Instead of just going to Google and typing in Google Scholar, come here and click on our Google Scholar link. What this does is this takes you to Google Scholar, but if App State has a copy of that article, you can get it directly from our databases. So you know sometimes when you're using Google and you click on the article and it takes you to this page where if you send them $45, they'll send you the article. Don't do that. Um, copy that information, put it in interlibrary loan, and send it to Diana, who's the interlibrary loan person, and then she'll send the article to you for free. But also, you can actually just access, if we have it, it'll show right here on the right-hand side, so you can access it directly. So here it is. So you are getting this from the library website. So that's pretty cool. So you can still use Google Scholar, but you're using it kind of wisely in the sense that you're going to get um, access to the article, whereas if you just use Google Scholar standalone, you may not. Okay. Um, when looking at the article databases, um, let's say Robin's an English major. Now you guys saw the databases, right? Very cool, mm -hmm. you can go down and search. But if you look on the right hand side, you're gonna see what's called guide for research. Are you familiar with the library guides? No. Okay, Robin, have you used the library guides before? Okay, first time today, awesome. Let me give you kind of a background. What library guides are, 
are that they're kind of one-stop shop how to for information that goes beyond what's on the library website. So for example, um, in English, some professors may meet, hook up with one of our librarians and create a guide just for their class. So maybe you're taking English 4560 Young Adult Literature. All of these resources were brought together by Margaret and Jewel that are just specific to that class or to that subject. So you're in that class, you're talking to the professor. Um, if you look here, here's an overview of where some information. You can go directly to the books and ebooks. Here's some useful subject headings that they give you, tell you how to get information from the IMC. Maybe you're just looking for articles. So here's, they've picked out specific articles that are just for this class, as opposed to the subject as a whole. They even will find web resources. Here's some legitimate web resources that you can use in your research. Now, something about the internet to be weary of. Sites like .com, .net, .org, anybody can create a .com site or a .net site. Anybody can pay GoDaddy $19.95 a, a month and create a website about education. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're an expert. Sites like .gov or .edu are the ones that you're going to want to use because those were written by the experts. So even though the internet has a lot of information, you have to be very, very careful about um, the legitimacy of those sites. So what's cool about using library guides as part of the research process is that the librarians have done the hard work for you. They have searched out the site, they have determined its legitimacy, and if it is a legitimate resource, they'll post it. So all of these sites are going to be legitimate sites to get information. Um, what's cool about Margaret and Jules' team is that they'll add lesson plan examples or some really cool websites that you could go to create lesson plans. Um, here's some curriculum standards where you're, as a teacher you're going to start thinking about all of that stuff. They add extra things um, that you may not necessarily be aware of. Um, one of these guides I did uh, for archaeology, for archaeology students, was I did the same thing. Here's some useful books, here's some articles, but I also added a link to professional associations and resources because I can remember being an archaeology student and my parents where are you going to get a job in that? How are you going to work? How are you going to support yourself? Um, so I added links on how to get jobs. Here's links to all the archaeology jobs. And some of these guides will have that. So you have like this beautiful mix of what the library has and what is legitimately out there on the internet. Plus, even better, especially in regards to um, Margaret and Jules, is that you have their contact information. So if you ever had any questions about um, the, uh, if you had questions about research or you had questions about one of the sites, here's their contact information. I actually put a picture of my dog, but here's a lovely picture of Greta so you can see what she looks like. But you can email her, you can contact her and say, hey, I was on your guide. There's this really great link. I had a couple of questions about it. So just know that you, you always have help. And two, on the library website, you're almost always going to see a chat box. So if you were to go back to the main site, and you see the chat box, just type in and just say hi. Um, it does take about a second or two because there's a bunch of us monitoring this, but you can always get instant help. The library chat box is pretty much open the whole time the library is open. So up until nine o'clock, you're going to get one of our librarians, but after nine o'clock, we switch it to NC Knows, which is the statewide. So you might get a librarian who's, on, who's working at ECU or you may get a librarian from one of the UNC schools that can answer your questions and help you. So you will always have help, whether you're writing that paper at, at three o'clock in the afternoon, or you're like me after you put the kids to bed and you've worked all day, you've cleaned the kitchen, done your laundry because you've stalled as much as you possibly can. Now you've got to write the paper. I need help. It's 12 o'clock. You can get it. So see, um, it's pretty awesome. Testing for class. Thanks so much. So any questions? Is there anything you would like me to show you? Um, this is your chance. Are you just like so gung-ho filled with information you're ready to go? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. I think 
it helped a lot, I guess, to searching now where I was unsure of where to find when they said scholarly articles and everything. So now this kind of zoomed into where I need to look and how I need to do it. Awesome. Well, something else, too, I want to go ahead and show you. Um, on the main page, so you saw the article databases, you saw Google Scholar. If you were to click on journal and magazine title, so again, maybe there's a specific journal that your professor is telling you to get an article from. We get a lot of students who come in and they're like, you know, I have to get this article from American Anthropology or I have to get an article from the Journal of American Education. You can find those specific titles and journals this way. Um, if you know the subject or the title, I'm just going to type in American Anthropology because I happen to just know that one. Okay, maybe I there's a specific article from Bill Ward Magazine I have to get. Um, professor said, get the 1991 volume two article from Billboard magazine. Here is all the locations of where we have it. So as you can see, here's the dates. So you want to make sure you're within the right date. And here's a list of all the online copies that we have. So you can check out all of the issues by date, by volume. And then you're basically reading the magazine right here. So here's all of the articles within that version. Um, again, click on the title, gives you all the information. Here's the site button. Here's the save. So this is how you can basically do a search looking for a specific journal or if you are looking for a specific article and you're just not finding it. This is kind of a shortcut on how to get there. So what's cool about it is you can do a search by subject and trust me, this is going to go through like the millions of articles that we are the journals that we have. So we have over 2,000 for education alone. Okay, so here you are. You're really kind of looking down even more narrowing down information and the different types of journals that we have. So again, if you need a list of journal titles, this is a good place to go. And if you have like a specific journal that you like, this is the, a good shortcut. So you don't have to do the basic, you know, the main search, you're just searching specifically. And that's right under journal and magazine title. And just for fun, I love to show people this. If you click on A under our databases, we have access to Ancestry.com. So you can play with this for free. You can create an account and search your family, which is always fun. I get a, a lot of students, I lose them when I show them this. And also, if you're interested in learning other languages, if you go to M and click on our Mango database, Mango Languages, you can practice any one of the 63 languages that we have. So we have access to all of these. Hmm. So if I ever wanted to learn Haitian Creole, this is how it works. It's a lot like Rosetta Stone, only I think it's more fun. And I let my kids play with this. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to easily participate in a conversation like this. Bonjour. Comment y est? Très bien. Et vous-même? Très bien. To say, hello, how are you? You would say, bonjour. Bon so like I said, it saves your con your information. You can just kind of play with it. Um, it's a really cool resource just in terms of you're about to travel somewhere or um, you just want to brush up on your Spanish. It's just kind of a neat database that we have. But we have a lot of really cool databases. And um, that's just one of the two I always like to show people because they don't really they don't realize we have it. Because sometimes it's not all just about research. Sometimes you just need to have fun and take a break. So one more link I want to show you that's super important are the wrap sessions. Now, you guys came to my workshop. You got a lot of information. But what I recommend is that you guys schedule a wrap session for every class you're taking. You can meet online like we're doing right now. You can meet in person. But basically what you're doing is you're going to sit down with a librarian and you can request specific librarians. So if you're like, hey, I really like Kelly. She was cool. Ha ha. Um, I'm going to meet with her. You can go ahead and click on this request a wrap session form and we can talk about whatever you're working on. So um, Alyssa, you said you're taking two classes. Well, maybe you saw all the research for this particular class. Maybe you need help finding it for another class. You can do a standing meeting with a librarian and every month or every semester you could be like hey um, can you help me get some information on this basically what the librarian does is we look ahead of time we'll come with you for a list of resources that we recommend 
and then we'll sit down with you and walk you through until you're comfortable with it. Most students will do one or two until they feel really comfortable with research, but we have some students that we hear from every semester um, because, like again, there's so much information out there. Sometimes it's hard to to know how to search for it or how to navigate through it. So it's just a really cool way of getting help, and it's free.